Well, happy Saturday, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here. We're live from One Bethlehem Plaza here in downtown Bethlehem here on the 22nd of November. It was a foggy morning. Going to see some breaks of sun here later this afternoon. Again, a uh, lot to talk about here today, but we'll always start off with our something cool with our power of one degree technology that quantifies the weather's influence on seasonal sales and then to predict those sales a year ahead uh, everywhere on Earth. So it sounds like crazy, but that's what we do for 23 plus years now. So I thought we'd key in on Christmas week, a critical week for retailers. So this is the 21st through 27th. We asked our AI chatbot. 360 IQ here, what do we see for weather-wise? And gives a nice narrative, but uh, maps below. Uh, generally milder on the East Coast, but again, a sign of a major polar vortex all across Canada, the US. And then it spits out uh, some key categories here. So snow throwers made the top of the list here. So that's exciting news for folks that like snow. Uh, it was a snowy period uh, last year, and we actually have it even snowier this year for the Christmas week. So snow throwers up 40% off of a good week uh, this week last year. Again, really poor a few years back, but the other categories would be like heaters, window insulation kits, uh, winter sports, ice melt. So, again, a strong week for uh, winter seasonal merchandise here for that uh, all important Christmas week. Thought we'd look at uh, the La Nina here. It's again, it's a week and probably going to be a very short lived uh, La Nina at best. Again, just the cooling of the equatorial Pacific. So, it might last a, a month or two here and then start to warm. As you can see, the models left here as we go into uh, 2026. So whether we get to full-blown El Nino next year, but it's heading in that direction here. So again, a quick La Nina. that will have some impact on our winter here, uh, but again, um, a short-lived event. Polar vortex, everyone always uh, gets excited about it when it's weak and ragged. The only challenge with that is that just because typically a weak polar vortex means you're gonna have some major cold and Arctic intrusions uh, heading south, it doesn't mean it's heading south toward you, right? So it can head to the US, it can head to Europe, Siberia, Asia. Uh, we are going to get a couple chunks here. So we got a little tiny piece uh, maybe around Thanksgiving in the eastern third of the country. And then another chunk maybe uh, as we get into that uh, first week of December around 6th, 7th. Uh, again, a chunk sweeping across the country here. So again, it is weak and ragged and that usually allows the cold air to head south. We look at drought here. Drought will make some huge improvements here. It's uh, already making some improvements over last year. 78% of the country was dry to drought phases. Uh, map left here is we're down to 69%. Uh, next amount of rain and snow we got coming here the next two weeks this will be uh, dramatically improving across much of the country here as we go um, again just next couple weeks uh, let alone the next month ahead here looking at our season to date uh, uh, cold days uh, less than 32 degrees is an index now again uh, still about 18 percent more than last year uh, but still fourth least so way below average on that front we'll be picking up some steam here as we go through the winnow for sure the snowfall index uh, made a downward trend here down 18 percent versus last year um, so now that's a uh, fourth least in 40 years so we'll be picking up some steam here we got some snowy weeks here coming up and we see that here so this uh, bar show you the change in the snowfall year over year uh, so blues are much much snowier than last year so again that first week of december um again the first week of winter meteorological winter um, about 400 inches across the the u.s population centers uh, so that's pretty significant um, so a huge change from last year so getting into a snowier pattern here for the late November, early December timeframe. Look at last week's world summary ending here today, 22nd. Uh, here in the U.S., we finally had a, after a few colder weeks uh, year on year. We've got a warmer week now, plus 2.4, warmer than last year, third warmest in 40 years, so very, very warm. If there was a cold spot, we'd say it's here in the Northeast where we've been uh, both colder than last year and below average. Those cold 32 degree days are down about 4% versus last year, least in nine years, third least in 40 years, so again, way below average on that front, and drier, 37% drier. So typically this time of year, we'd like to see colder and drier weather to drive retail seasonal sales. So again, really didn't have that entirely, uh, other than maybe the Northeast Great Lakes. Uh, very, very cold there in Canada, or, I'm sorry, UK, coldest in 32 years, third coldest in 40 years. Uh, getting um, pretty wet there down in Brazil as well. So maps uh, inset left are the trends versus average. Big maps here are the trends versus last year. Look at this week, uh, all important Thanksgiving week here. So short work week, but again, uh, Thursday, Friday. Critical Thanksgiving, Black Friday period here. So it's a uh, warmer, again, a uh, pretty cold one last year. So 3.6 warm in last year, warmest in five years, 12th warmest in 40 years. Um, it's a little misleading here. We'll talk about the Thanksgiving because there's a big cold blast in the middle this week. So it's a warm to cold uh, warming trend, but um, Thanksgiving looks cold. Look at the 40-year snowfall index here is up about 13%. Most in six years, 18th most in 40 years. So a little bit near average uh, in that regard. And precip also up about 50%. Um, Still slightly below average here, but again, see a lot of snow there in the 
uh, potentially in the northern Rockies, uh, upper plains, and then some heavier storms down in the south central U.S. But again, let's key in on Thanksgiving because, again, that's in the middle of this week here. And then, look, it's quite a bit different here. So very, very cold from uh, Montana down to Georgia. So, again, this is the four-day Thanksgiving weekend period, 27th through the 30th. Um, so we're last year was frigid, right? It was one of the coldest uh, Thanksgiving periods uh, in decades. So this year is 3.9, warmer than that, uh, warmest in three years, but still 12th colds in 40 years, so below average national temperature. So again, all the way from Montana to Georgia, that's uh, below average. Uh, looking at the snowfall front, way, way up, 195% more than last year, most in 39 years, second most in 40 years. So we'll see about this. Some of this is probably a little overdone here in the South Dakota areas. But again, uh, the theme is this is the going to see a little bit of a polar vortex coming down. And with that, we may get some uh, storminess uh, out in front of it. Um, looking at the precip here, again, about 159% wetter than last year. Wettest in three years, um, 20th wettest in 40. So a little bit above average on that front. We'll look at the six-day snowfall uh, trends here. Uh, not much Sunday, a little bit in the Rocky Mountains. Start to see a little bit more in the Rocky Mountains in the Pacific Northwest Monday, even New England. And then a little bit sign of heavier stuff there in uh, North Dakota. And then uh, going through the Upper Plains, maybe a little bit of a clipper here. Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, again, some light uh, snow, showery, flurry stuff across the northern tier of the U.S. And again, maybe some heavier uh, lake effect uh, downstream here. So the six-day total here is uh, still down about 40 percent, uh, at least in three years. About 23 percent of the U.S. population uh, will have some accumulating snow. Look at next week here again, you see signs of that polar vortex coming in, a glancing shot here. So this is the getting us in the first full week of uh, December. And again, meteorological winter starts on the 1st. Uh, cold, again, this time last year was the coldest in 22 years, so this year's 3.1. Warmer than that, but still 16th coldest and below average national temperatures. Snowfall is way, way up again, 136% over last year, most in 18 years, second most in 40 years, so way above average snowfall. Again, we'll see this might be a little overdone, obviously. Um, Rocky Mountain certainly going to get a lot of snow. Um, doubtful that uh, South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin is going to see that much snow, but TBD, this is a strong polar vortex. and. A uh, good chance of uh, snow out in front of that. Rainfall off the scale here, 518% wet than last year. Number one, wet is in 40 years. So this is not ideal for the holiday shopping season. Normally we'd like kind of coolish, not too cold, and dry. Um, so the storminess is definitely a negative on store traffic, meaning we are more likely to trip consolidate. We're not going to go to many, many stores, but we may do trip consolidation and actually go more online shopping. So this benefits the folks like the Amazons and the Walmart.coms that have uh, pretty much everything you want to buy, uh, but uh, again, do that online. And just aggregating, I'd be careful here because we're aggregating warms and colds periods here, but uh, the theme is you can see some colder trends moving into Canada and the U.S., uh, while the U.K., which was frigid, uh, is warming up. Um, big map here now is trends versus average. Bottom map is trends versus last year. If we look at precip here again, the theme is stormy for sure. Uh, either heavy rains in the south central um, Mississippi, Tennessee valleys, and then uh, potentially very, very heavy snow all through the Rockies into the Midwest. So again, that will be the theme of uh, the, as we get to winter. So winter will get off to a good start. Did got off a great start last year. It looks like it's going to get off a great start again this year. Uh, so folks, have a great week ahead, and we will talk to you again this time next week.